Hillary Clinton represents the worst of the Washington machine. The arrogance of power, corruption and cover-up, conflicts of interest and failed leadership with tragic consequences. We're ready for Hillary. We know exactly what to expect. Hillary Clinton represents the failed policies of the past. Does America want a third Obama term? There you have it. Mm. A little sampling of some of the responses. Ted Cruz and Rand Paul taking very different approaches to the Hillary Clinton announcement yes. there, releasing those ads on social media. We welcome you into this week's roundtable discussion. I'm John Bachman, joined by Miranda Khan. Also, we're going to bring in Washington Time columnist Tim Constantine and Newsmax contributor Larry Elder. We just heard there, guys, that sampling, the difference between Rand Paul and Ted Cruz. You might not have seen it, but of course, with the Rand Paul ad, we had the announcer, uh, very slick production value. Ted Cruz basically got in front of his iPhone and had a very specific response to that ad. I think both were effective. Larry, let's start with you. Um, what was your take on the different approaches by these two candidates? Well, I'm not sure they were all that different. Both of them were, were intensely negative. Both of them, of course, talked about her long career in public life, national public life, and foreign policy public life. And both of them want to, want to, are asking the fundamental question that I think voters are asking, and that is, do we want a third term of Obama's economic policies? Do we want a third term of his foreign policies that most people consider to be incoherent, uh, if not completely confusing? Mr. Constantine, what do you think about the fact that you know, we could see a lot of a, a divergence in the style of these, uh, these videos. I agree with Larry. Uh, the message is essentially the same, but the way it was delivered was very different. And I think, again, very effective by both. Well, I think you're right. I think it is very effective, and, and it's a negative hit on Hillary. We just had an interesting discussion before I came on. I said, on one hand, with all the Republicans hitting on Hillary because she's the inevitable nominee, it forces her a little bit more toward the center, and yet you've got groups like Greenpeace and others out there who are saying, let's draft uh, Elizabeth Warren, which forces her a little to the left. Hillary doesn't know who she is or where she is. I'm not sure what her image consultant is going to tell her to do at this point. All right, so let's break it down. Let's take a look at the Republicans running for the 2016 GOP nomination, if we can. We have Senator Rand Paul and Senator Ted Cruz, who recently announced that they are running. And 10 candidates that are most likely running, as we mentioned earlier in the show, Florida Senator Marco Rubio is set to announce whether he's running or not later today. Now, on the Democratic side, no big there surprise there. There was one, and there was one, <laughs> Hillary Clinton. Uh, will anyone dare try to jump, put their name into the And guys, the I, guess, I, I guess the question we got to ask here, we saw all those candidates out there. You had the right. running, the probably, the probably not Joe Biden, and definitely not running Elizabeth Warren. Uh, then we can also throw Barry, uh, Barry Sanders in there. <laughs> Sorry. The, uh, the social... Um, a socialist from socialist. Vermont. Yes, yes. I'm right. Because he's, he's for him to say that. He is an, he's he's independent, but he he's going to run. He's, he's somebody Hillary Clinton's going to have to answer to. But again, you have all these Republican candidates hitting Hillary, who is the only one running at this time. You have a uh, an avalanche of digital ads going out there. Is too much, too much. Could there be too many ads, and people might turn it off and say, "I'm sick of all these attacks on Hillary Clinton." Go ahead, Mr. Constantine. Well, maybe, but I'll tell you what, Hillary has done something very standard in her polling numbers. Even as first lady, Hillary Clinton was the only first lady that had negative numbers. Her numbers went up when Bill cheated on her. People felt bad for her. If you remember the last election cycle, when she lost in Iowa, her polls started to sag in New Hampshire until she cried. And yes, she said, oh, it's so event. tough sometimes. And then her poll numbers went back up. It's only when Hillary is a tragic victim do her numbers go up. When she goes out and tries to press the flesh and be a warm fuzzy, it doesn't work. It never has. Larry, I want to and, get... And, go ahead, Larry. I was going to say, and Tim, I'm anxious to see whether or not any of the Republicans are going to do this. The conventional attack line against Hillary, of course, will be Benghazi, will be uh, the emails, will be the Clinton Foundation contributions, and whether or not there was a quid pro quo uh, based on those contributions. But I think her real Achilles heel is character. There were two books, one called No One Left to Lie to by the late Christopher Hitchens, the other one called Hell to Pay by the late Barbara Olson, and both of them describe Hillary as being the architect of what they call the nuts or slut strategy, and that uh. is attacking the these women that have made allegations against Bill Clinton in the most horrific ways, including Juanita Broderick, who claimed that she was raped by Bill Clinton and two weeks after that was threatened by Hillary Clinton verbally. I don't think anyone's ever asked Hillary about that, and I think there are enough feisty Republicans this time to ask her about that. She's going to have to answer that question. Well, there also is a strategy that worked in 2008 on how to beat Hillary Clinton, which nobody <laughs> thought would exist until 2008. Yeah. We know she's going to focus on Iowa, guys, and we will see if uh, more tears come out in that listening well, tour that she's going to go on. on her being more empathetic, so. Tim Constantine. Time from the from the Washington uh, 
from joining us from Washington, D.C. and Newsmax, Washington. Also, Larry Elder joining us from the left coast, California. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. Fascinating take, and we'll have both of you back for another one of our roundtable discussions. And coming up next on Newsmax Now, President Obama meets with Cuba's leader, Raul Castro, but he hasn't met with Israel's prime minister, leaving some wondering why. We'll hash that out in our mm. rehash segment. Who's talking about that on social media? Also, more to come on today's